Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to my May TBR. Um, as usual, I try to get this out nice and early in case there's any of these books you guys want to read along with me. Um, there also may still be some other books that get announced in May. I have a few things that I'm working on, so maybe they'll be like, well, I probably won't make an updated TBR, but I will be sharing that. Um, there are some interesting changes happening my, in my life as of now, and I'm very excited slash nervous to see what May has to offer, but let's get started with this TBR because I'm very excited. The first thing that I want to mention is that the first weekend in May is going to be the Mafia Romance Readathon. This is going to be round two of the readathon, um, and it is going to be May 5th through the 8th. So it's going to be a Thursday to a Sunday this time because I wanted to give us more days to read Mafia because last June when we did it, it was freaking amazing. Definitely go check out my Instagram for more details. I have an entire like story saved on my Instagram profile if you want more details. But a little bit of it is I will be co-hosting this with Tori, Jessen, Jess, Tiffany and Madison will be my co-host for this readathon. We have a ton of prizes that will be available. There's a build your own bingo board and eventually there will be a prize form to fill out and you'll be able to win signed books from some of your, well, at least my favorite mafia authors. Uh, they were very generous in the prizes that they offered and I cannot wait to get that going. It's going to be so much fun. But I'm actually not going to set a TBR ahead of time. Um, I do have my cute little flat lay made. So I made my blank bingo board here. And then these, this is the space for the books. I think I can probably read five books in four days um, because I won't be working during this weekend. So I should be able to get through more. And then I picked the prompts that I want to do and I put them here so I'll be able to choose from these prompts to fill my board in as I read the books. So that's gonna be my cute little flat lay in my journal. And then what I did, which will be fun, um, I actually have some more to add in here, actually. I need to find them. But what I did is I took all of the mafia romances that I have on my Kindle right now and I put them in a spreadsheet with which prompts that they fulfill. So let me just grab one out. This is a cute little TBR jar that I got off of Etsy. Um, and what I did is I put them in a spreadsheet and then I wrote which prompts that they fulfill. So here's an example. This one is Immaculate Deception by Nicole Fox. So I wrote that and then the prompts that it fit and then I cut them all out and folded them up and put them in the jar. So what I'm planning to do is when the readathon starts, I will start drawing these out, you know, and I'll give myself some veto power, like if I'm not in the mood, but a lot of these I have audiobooks for, and I'm just very excited. We'll see how many books that I get read for that. But yeah, so that's what's going to happen for the Mafia readathon. A couple of the ladies have already made videos with recommendations, and of course I have an entire uh, like 10 mafia videos already. So I feel like I've definitely made a lot of recommendation videos for this, which I'm excited about. So let's go ahead and dive in and we will start with the book clubs and readathons, the books that I will be reading in May. And this is my new book cart. I actually had did a live chat while I was putting together this book cart because I have a beautiful pink one, but it is not very sturdy. And so I got a just plain white cart from Target and I put it together and I started decorating it. It actually, it's hard to tell in the light, but it says the book refuge in silver and I have a bunch more stickers to put on it too, but I will put my TBR behind me as we go. So the first thing we have to talk about Rake Appreciation Society and the book that we will be reading for May is going to be The Mark West Makes His Move by Diana Quincy. This is book three in the clandestine affairs series we want to you know we we choose books from all over the time like we choose books from all over the time and indie and traditionally published books but we wanted to pick one that was um just coming out and i really enjoyed the first book in this series which crystal and i actually buddy read together when we didn't know each other too well yet 
and I haven't read The Viscount Made Me Do It, but I have that one and I plan to read it before I get to this one. So the live show for this one's going to be May 19th, and this one says that it's about, um, there's a female map maker and she is a secret, um, and it would ruin her if anyone found out. Um, and so Rose's secret is tested by the arrival of a handsome new footman who shows far too much interest in his new mistress. Rose battles an intense attraction for the enigmatic servant, but maintaining a proper distance isn't easy when you and Temptation live under the same roof. And then uh, few have met the reclusive half-Arab Marquis of Brandon, who is rumored to live with a harem of beauties among his mother's people near Jerusalem. Brandon couldn't care less what society thinks of him or that his fellow peers are disdainful of his common blood, but he won't stand for being robbed. That's why he's disguised himself as a footman in the home of a respected, respected map maker who cheated Brandon out of his land, but the nobleman's plans for retribution are complicated by his growing attraction for the secretive lady of the house. So that sounds cool. And I love this cover. Love that they're still having some clinch covers. So that is going to be what I read with my girl crystal and we're going to use that to keep it in place actually that's silly we'll have to put it up hopefully that will work okay then we have the sjm along which is happening and may is the last month again where we will have double live shows after we do these ones we will have one live show a month and have one book a month going forward um well, a book and a novella. So in the first two weeks of May, so May 1st through the 15th, we are reading The Air of Fire, um, which I'm so excited to get to. So we'll be reading Air of Fire, which is book three, and we will be reading um, the second, or the third novella, sorry, which is The Assassin in the Desert. Let me check. The Assassin in the Desert, yeah. So we'll be reading those. And then for the last two weeks of May, uh, we will be reading A Court of Thorns and Roses because as I said, when I like first announced this, we we're going to be doing a chronological read through as in like release, like as she released them. And after Air of Fire came Court of Thorns and Roses. Um, I actually have two different covers. I also have these. So very excited to be doing that. I plan to, for this one, listen to the new production of audio that is done, which has like multiple voices and like sound effects and stuff. So I'm very excited to listen to that. So those will be the other book club books that we have going. Okay. Then I have upcoming releases or new releases. Um, and arcs that I will have. As usual, since I do a lot of indie books, there are books that get moved around all the time. So these are just the ones that I know about right now. Like in April, which was just crazy. For my April TBR, I only had like five arcs listed and I ended up reading like eight, nine arcs <laughs> because indie authors can move their releases around or this or whatever, which is great. So the ones that I have for sure, and I do have my Chromebook here. I'm going to read the description of these just because it's fun. Um, we have the first one up. Let's see if I can find it is where to go. A daring pursuit by Kate Bateman. This is the second book in the Ruthless Rivals series. I really did enjoy the first one quite a lot. It's between the Davises and the Montgomerys. So this one is, there's two enemies. Karis Davis is doing everything in her power to avoid marriage. Staying single is the only way to hide the secret that could ruin her and her family if it was revealed. For the past two seasons, she has scandalized the town with her outrageous outfits and brazen ways in a futile bid to deter potential suitors outwardly confident and carefree inside she's disillusioned with both men and love there's only one person who's ever brought her act who's ever who's never bought her act the only man who makes her heart race tristan montgomery one of her family's greatest rivals so that sounds awesome the cover of this is absolutely beautiful so very excited 
to read that one. Um, then there will be The Servant and the Gentleman, which I have an arc for this one. And this is a gay historical romance, a men and MM one. And this one is the third book in a series, actually. This is by Annabelle Green. I didn't read the other two, but I'm excited to try this. And it says, a surly gentleman and his overworked clerk fake a relationship in this swoon-worthy Regency romance. So this says, William Hartley's wealth and social standing often make up for his short temper, but they can't cure his claustrophobia. He's lost hope of finding help for it until he meets Josiah Balfour. In a moment of panic, Josiah's presence is a balm to his senses, leaving Hartley for the first time, leaving Hartley calm for the first time in months. Aww. Josiah knows his place, and it's not in the bed of a gentleman. As administrator for the Society of Beasts, he's responsible for the club's well-being. When a threat to the society emerges from an uninspected quarter, it falls to Josiah to deal with it. But Hartley is willing to help, even if it involves posing as a couple to infiltrate the rival's club. Josiah needs Hartley's prestige to help him save the society, while Hartley simply needs Josiah. Their relationship might be a sham, but the desire between them is all too real. Okay, so I'm interested to see how this one goes. This is from Karina Press, and I've read quite a few of their LGBT romances and love them. So, excited for that. Then there is Fallen King, which will be coming out. And this is book three in a Bella Matthews series. And the funny thing is, where is this one at? I've read the first book in this series. And the second book I have on my TBR for the readathon. I want to try to read it. But these ones you can read as standalones, and I'm very interested in this one because they connect with the mafia a little bit. But this one, number one, I love this cover. Oh my God. And the blurb for this one is Growing up as the oldest Kingston sibling, I knew what was expected of me. King Corp was my legacy, and my siblings were my responsibility. The world was ours for the taking, for the living, but I neglected to live for myself until her. Daphne Brenner wasn't meant to be part of the deal. I never intended to acquire a new assistant with my new hockey team, but here she is, constantly challenging me, continually intriguing me, and never backing down, even if I'm a villain in her fairy tale. When he sold our family hockey team to Max Kingston, my father destroyed my dreams without a second thought, and that was only his first betrayal. Now I have to play nice with my new boss in order to carve out my new future, but when long days and late nights lead to so much more, I realize I'm falling for this intensely arrogant, beautiful man who quietly puts every th everyone else's needs before his own. Playing nice with the enemy isn't nearly as hard as I thought it would be. So this is very interesting to me. Because that just sounds like a, blo a boss employee romance, which I'm interested in. But the first book in the series, like, is a mafia romance. And the second one is a fighter romance, which, you know, fighters can connect to the mafia. So I don't know if that will, like, how that will be explained. But I'm really interested in reading this because I love, like, forbidden workplace romances. So that one will be coming out. Then Immortal by Maggie Cole will be coming out. There's not a blurb for the, well, I think there is, but this is the twin brother to um, Dante Gianni, and he will be with uh, the best friend of Bridget. So very excited about that one. That one's going to be a forced marriage trope. So I'm sure I will get an arc of that one and we'll be reading that as well. And then this one, there's no blurb for it but it will be Inferno by Amara Ray. I actually just read the arc of Hydrus and it will be out by the time you see this video, which is in the Immortal Coven series. And I loved Lifeblood and I loved Hydrus. So I'm so excited to read Inferno, which will be about the half, like the witch who has fire power. So very excited about that. So yeah, those are all of the new releases that I'll be reading. Then I have two books that are from my reread list, okay? So I had made this video at the beginning of the year 
and I've only read two books off of this list so far and I was like oh shoot I forgot about it so I made a list of books that I would like to revisit and I picked two more books off of that and these are all books that I own so I really have no excuse so I have come to daddy by Brianna Hale and this is the first book in love don't cost a thing this is a sugar baby and a sugar daddy romance um, and so the heroine she needs some extra money so she's going to be a sugar baby and Misha is this uh, sexy older older billionaire who is willing to pay top price um, and be her daddy but there's more involved in this than it would a appear and then Cold Queen by Kay Webster this is a retelling of like Anna and Elsa basically it's kind of a retelling of Frozen a fantasy retelling it's very dark there's a lot of triggers in this one um, and it's been quite a while since I read books from this series like, look at that. and I just really want to reread this I mean it's funny because it's finally warming up I should have reread this in the winter but I'm very excited to reread that it's a dark retelling it says. Um, okay so then I have uh, five books that are viewer recommendations so if you don't know I have a viewer recommendation form it is linked in my link tree you can find my link tree in my description box and I have almost 500 recommendations there over the past I think it's been about a year over the past year I've been able to read I think like 80 of these I've read I think I've read between 60 and 80 of them I've read quite a few and some of them have been some of my favorite books so I love that you guys give me these recommendations I know sometimes it gets frustrating when I don't get around to them but I promise I go through that list once a month and I will pick random numbers or if I'm in a really mood reading thing I will like search a term you know like actually I forgot to say that for the mafia readathon I searched out which ones were mafia wrecks and I wrote a couple of those down too so I check it all the time so definitely um, check out my book rec form if you want to recommend something to me if you've recommended it before you don't have to recommend it again it is in there it doesn't make it more likely that I'll read it if you put it in there twice but if it's put in there twice by different people I like keep it in there twice because it means people want it more but I can see who's recommending things many times you don't have to I promise I'm checking it out okay so the five that I picked we will look at these ones real quick because I like to go in as blind as possible for these ones just so that you know I don't have any preconceived notions so the first one of the viewer Rex is um, pensive by T Travena Terry and this one is supposed to be I believe this is supposed to be an interracial romance too which is cool this one is BDSM situation so this one is um, Asa and Elise and she wants to become a full-time writer and she wants a life she's always imagined for herself but her past of abuse and shame threatens her future and so she decides to take a break of self-healing and go on vacation and the one thing she never expected to run into is one of her characters personified and when they cross paths thirsts are quenched wrists are tied fire is ignited and secrets are revealed as with any arrangement trust is required will they both give in to the future calling them or will they stay with what they know and let go of each other wow interesting that looks good it looks dark and twisty then there is this one has been recommended many many times so I'm glad I'm getting to this one the unwanted wife by Natasha Anders this one is Teresa Noble has met her father's associates in the past, but the generous Italian-born Sandro De Lucchi, Lucy leaves her speechless. 18 months into their marriage, however, Sandro has turned to ice. Desperate to escape a relationship that has proven to be as stubbornly passionate as it is cold and hateful, Theresa summons up the courage to ask for divorce. But before he'll grant her a request, Sandro demands something from Teresa, a son. 
The stalemate sickens her, never mind that Sandro has yet to introduce Teresa to the large family that means so much to him, or that Teresa overhears her husband on the phone with a mystery woman. Most damning is that Teresa senses, in Sandro's treatment of her, the behind-the-scenes machinations of Jackson Noble, her cruel father. From the depths of her anxiety, Teresa must seek an empowering truth about the husband who calls her with such cold affection, his beloved. So, all right. I mean, I have a feeling that one's wrapped up in the mafia somehow, just based on the clues that I'm picking up. So, intrigued. Then there is Dare You by Ella Frank. I have the audiobook ready to go for this one, so ready to go for that. This one is a gay romance, as usually Ella Frank does. And it is a firefighter gay romance. And this one's the first one in a trilogy. Oh, and this one's gay for you. Okay. I don't read a ton of gay for you anymore, but I love Ella Frank's gay for you books. So, yep, we won't read any more of that one because I don't want to know anymore. Then I will be doing Empire of Desire. I know this one is highly recommended. And I will say this once and for all. This one is the last chance I'm giving Rena Kent, okay? I've read many of her books and only like one of them has worked for me, but I will try this one because it gets recommended to me constantly and I am willing to try again. Um, this is one that I was intrigued by who the hero was. Okay, of course the blurb isn't showing up, but I know this one is a father's best friend age gap. So, and I think it might also be an office romance, maybe not, I don't know, I'll read it anyway. The blurb isn't coming up for that one, so we'll move along. Um, oh, I also forgot to put in, hold on. The last one that is a viewer recommendation that I am going to read is Big Rock by Lauren Blakely. And this one is a hero with a big dick. Um, and... He works for a jewelry store and he needs to do a fake fiance for a week. And I heard this one's pretty funny and it's told all from the hero's point of view. I wonder if this one's one read by Joe Arden. It could be. Very well could be. So yeah, I have the audio for that one too. And yeah, okay. So those are the ones I'll be reading that are viewer recommendations. Then I have some books that are my, from my TBR prompts. I still try to do that. So I have five books that I picked for those. So I will tell you what those ones were. So this one said, read a Faded Mates podcast recommendation. And this was from uh, Sophia. So thank you, Sophia. And I am very excited. I have quite a few to choose for this. So I picked Like Lovers Do by Tracy Livesay. This is a book that I've been wanting to read for ages and I haven't got around to it. So this one is a fake dating, I think. So it's Dr. Nicole Allen. Um, she is an accomplished surgeon and she's had a tough pass. Um, and then she disciplines an intern, a powerful donor son, and a prestigious fellowship she's awaiting is placed in jeopardy. So then there is Benjamin Reed Van Mont, um, and he's a black sheep, and he's started his own business, though he's not ready to settle down, and he knows when the time comes, it definitely won't be with a workaholic doctor like his friend, even if she had him re-examining his edict. So when Ben's status climbing ex-girlfriend finds her way back into his orbit, Nick proposes a swap of services. She'll spend a week with Ben on Martha's Vineyard pretending to be his girlfriend, but only if he'll have his family intervene on her behalf so she won't lose her fellowship. So I have heard such great things about Tracy Livesay, so it is time to read it. We'll be doing it. Then this one says, um, the trope is I was planning to marry somebody else. And this is from Stacy. She is a channel member and a good friend. Um, and I'm so excited because the book that I picked was The Husband Trap by Tracy Ann Warren. And I've been meaning to get to this trilogy forever. So this one is 
Violet has always longed for the passionate embrace of Adrian Winter, the wealthy Duke of Rayburn. The problem is he's supposed to marry Violet's sister. But then Jeanette refuses to go through with the ceremony mere minutes before it's to begin, and soft-spoken Violet finds herself walking down the aisle and taking vows in her sister's place. Soon, shy Violet is a high society wife, trying to keep her real identity a secret while living out the fantasies of her wildest dreams. Adrian thinks he knows exactly what he's gotten himself into. Jeanette might be flirty and, well, a bit self-involved, but she's the picture-perfect wife to carry on the winter name. Yet this marriage of convenience brings the groom more than he bargained for when he finds his sweet, innocent wife surprising him at every turn. And though he never planned on true love, Adrian is definitely in danger of losing his heart. So, I was supposed to marry somebody else. There we go. Then I pulled an HR set before 1811. So pre-Regency historical. And this was from Shan Reads. And I knew that that meant it was time for a Highlander romance. So I picked The Highlander by Elaine Kaufman. Nice step back here. And this one says, when Tavish Graham stumbles upon the naked body of Sophie DeLampert, he thinks she is dead. But it doesn't take him long to discover that Sophie is very much alive and more woman than he can handle. So he leaves her with his brother, James, the Earl of Monlee. Beautiful, young, and French, Sophie finds herself in the wild, strange lands of the Scot. Terrified and not willing to trust James, she fails to tell him that she is the granddaughter of Louis XIV and that she is fleeing a forced marriage to the hated English Duke of Rockingham. Rockingham. Reluctantly, Sophie begins to fall in love with the rugged Highlander, and before she can reveal the truth of her past, James discovers her royal connection and wonders what else she is keeping from him. Can James resist her, or will he defy the might of England and France for a lover as wild and passionate as himself? Ooh, I'm ready for it. This looks like Mr. Wyndham. <laughs> I love when I can recognize that. All right, then I have a book with a flower on the cover and this is from still a tourist blog and i picked a ruin of roses by kf burn i know this is supposed to be a twisted retelling i'm guessing it's beauty and the beast and i've heard it's pretty good so this one says i could save him but would he ruin me the beast the creature who stalks stalks the forest wood the dragon prince he has suffered a fate worse than death we all have a curse put upon us by the mad king we are a kingdom locked in time, shifters unable to feel our animals, stuck here by a deal between the late king and a demon who seeks our destruction. The only one keeping the kingdom alive is Nathian, the golden prince to a stolen throne, the last dragon shifter. He's our hope. He's my nightmare. When he catches me tra trespassing in the forbidden wood, he does punish me with death, as he's entitled. He doesn't. He takes me instead, forces me back to his castle as prisoner, and seeks to use me. Apparently, I can save him. I can save the whole forgotten kingdom locked away by the demon king's power. But it would mean taming the monster beneath his skin. It would mean giving myself to him. And it would mean my ruin. Woo! I haven't been putting these books up here. All right, and then... We're just chaos walking, y'all. We are chaos walking. Okay, and then the last one that I had was a book from an author you love, but you have put off reading. And this was the absolute perfect time to read Anton by Sophie. This is one of my signed ones. I received the, uh, uh, what's it called? The Underworld series signed. And I haven't read um, Anton through the end of the series. So this one is, I know her secret. I saw her singing in a seedy little nightclub. My boss says I'm supposed to kidnap Violet and bring her back to Paris. The Bratva has a plan for her, but the closer I get to Violet, the more I want her for myself. I'll take her from her bed in the middle of the night. I'll bring her into my world and I'll show her who she really is. Alrighty, and then the last two books I want to read, these are just because um, they don't fit into anything. I just want to read them. I received some signed books from JT Geisinger. Yes, I haven't read all of her books, and I'm excited to read them. So she sent me Rules of Engagement, which is supposed to be one of the funniest books that she's written. Um, and so this one is a football romance. 
and um, there's a matchmaking service. Whoa. So Maddie McRae is a matchmaker. Um, and Mason Spark is a rude, arrogant NFL quarterback. And he's her new client. He's gorgeous and infuriating. And with his multi-million dollar contract on the line due to his behavior, he needs to settle down. But when he starts to fall for the adorable matchmaker who can't stand him, the playboy finds himself in the game of his life. That sounds amazing. And then, I am truly terrified, but I was promised an HEA is Midnight Valentine. And this one said, Jen, true love never dies. And... This one is um, Megan and Cassidy were childhood sweethearts who thought they would be together forever. Fate had other plans. Soon after they were married, Cass's life was tragically cut short. Still grieving five years later, Megan moves from Phoenix to the small town of Seaside, Oregon, hoping to rebuild her life. Her first night there, she meets the town recluse, Theo, withdrawn, guarded, and mysteriously silent since a terrible accident left him scarred. Theo takes an instant and explicable dislike to Megan, but as their paths cross again and again, Megan becomes convinced there's more to Theo than meets the eye. When she discovers the reason for his silence, his nightmares, and especially his pointed dislike, Megan becomes convinced something far more astonishing. A second chance at a once-in-a-lifetime love is possible, or is a broken heart the cruelest kind of liar? So, there we go. Those are all the books that I'm going to try to read in May. And, yeah, that always takes longer than I think it will. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know which of the books you're excited for me to read, which ones you'd like to read along with me. And, yeah, we'd love to see you for the Rake Appreciation Society if you're interested. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.